Okay, so 26 says to approximate the length of a marsh, a surveyor walks 425 meters from point A to point B. The surveyor then turns 65 degrees and walks 300 meters to point C. Approximate the length of AC, length AC of the marsh. So if you look at the picture that's there, here's your 425, right? He, so he starts here, he walks 425 this way, then he turns 65 degrees, which is where that angle is, and then he walks 300 meters. So the 65 is on the outside of my triangle. How do I get the angle on the inside of the triangle? Subtract it from 180 because those two are linear pair or form a line. That means that this is 115 degrees. So if I want to know AC, which is here, I can say that X over the sine of 115 would equal, I need, oh, sorry, this is law of cosines, not law of sines. Away. This is side angle side, right? So that's law of cosines. One of your challenges is going to be that, right? Figure out what information you've got. This I know I have two sides in the included angle, which means you've got side angle side. And for that one, we're going to do law of cosines. So it would be x squared equals the other two sides, so 300 squared plus 425 squared minus 2 times 300 times 425 times the cosine of 115. And then don't forget to square root whatever you get from that, and that's gonna give you that 615.1 meters. Yeah, just be careful. Those word problems are gonna get blended in together, so you gotta kinda look at what you're given. Side angle side, and side side side, you're gonna do law of cosines, right? of cosines and then if it's angle angle side or side side angle you're going to do law of sines mm -hmm. any other questions from that first page so six one six two start of six three oh first it asks for component form and the magnitude so it's Terminal minus initial, 7 minus 0. Terminal minus initial, 3 minus 10. So I get 7, negative 7. That's the component form. And then the magnitude is the square root of A, which is 7 squared, plus B, which is negative 7 squared. So 49 plus 49 is 98. And that would be 2 and 49, which is 7 and 7 or seven root two. So sometimes it'll stay to round, sometimes it'll stay to keep exact. Your magnitude, you're definitely keeping exact. The things you're gonna use your calculator to round on are your angle between, law of sines, law of cosines, word problems, that's it. Everything else is gonna be kept exact. Great job. That there's a difference between a unit vector, right? This says unit vector in the direction. Okay, that's when you just do the component form over the magnitude, split it. If it then said find a vector with a magnitude of five, let's say, in the same direction, as, let's just pull 46 down here, negative 12, negative five, what's the difference between that and the unit vector one? At the end, you're going to start it the same way. You're going to still do component form over the magnitude. But at the end, with the one that gives you a magnitude, you're going to multiply that 5. So I would have done the work to get to here. And then I would do 5 times negative 12 over 13, negative 5 over 13. So if it gives you a magnitude, so you get negative 60 over 13 and negative 25 over 13. So those are two. They both say same direction, but one is a unit vector, which means you don't multiply anything by the end, and that magnitude should be one at the end, if you check it. And the other one, it's gonna give you a magnitude, so you're gonna multiply that in. Everybody's good. Mm -hmm. All right, then we went to dot product. All those properties of dot products, we went to angle in between, like number 70. Make sure you can graph them. 
Make sure you'd be able to find the sum using the graph, all that stuff that we went over yesterday. So to find the unit vector on this one, we do the component form, so negative 12 over negative 5 over the magnitude of that, which would be the square root of negative 12 squared plus negative 5 squared. So that's 144 plus 25, which is 169, and the square root of 169 is 13. So then I'd get negative 12 over 13 and negative 5 over 13. If the bottom had a square root, I would rationalize. This time I got lucky and it didn't, so you just have to simplify it. But that's unit vector. So unit vector, you don't multiply anything in at the end. Same direction with a different magnitude like the one that I wrote in there. That's when you're going to multiply the magnitude in at the end. Any other questions? Okay, and then yesterday we went over a word problem. Remember I said it's not on this, but the, the word problem with the horizontal uh, change and the, ver the vertical component and the horizontal component. So if you want to find the vector of magnitude of the graph, you just multiply and multiply Yep. Okay. Yep. Everybody's good? So 70's angle between, right? Angle between formula is that the cosine of theta is equal to the dot product over the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. So dot product 3 times 4 plus 1 times 5 gives you 12 plus 5, which is 17. That's your numerator. Then the denominator, I need to know the magnitude of u, so the square root of 3 squared plus 1 squared, and the magnitude of v, 4 squared plus 5 squared. And I get the square root of 9 plus 1, square root 10, and square root of 16 plus 25, square root 41. So then when I type that in the calculator, you can do it all in one step. I would do cosine negative 1, 17 divided by, open up the square root, but make sure it stays open, and do 10 times 41 inside that square root, and you should get that 32.9. And it, it didn't tell you, right? But it will tell you what to round to. I'm pretty sure that one's in your tenth, but it will tell you what to round to on your test. Okay, I was reading, I had all the numbers, but I was getting like a square. So watch how your square root is grouped. Because it might be doing 17 divided by 10, and then if you stop the square root, it's taking that, multiplying it by 41, and then it's trying to find the cosine inverse of a number bigger than 1, which you can't do. So make sure that this these are both underneath your square root. You're welcome. And then remember, you can kind of like check it, right? So like I could plot 3, 1, 1, 2, 3, 1, and 4, 5, which is definitely acute, which is consistent with my 32.9. Any other questions on this page? 73 says graph the vectors and find the degree measure of the angle between the vectors. So if I had a number line, this would have been 4, 1. So right 4 up 1, that would be that vector, that would be u. This would be 1, negative 4. 1, negative 4, that would be that vector. That would be V. And then the angle between is the cosine of theta equals U dot V over the magnitude of U times the magnitude of V. So the dot product, first times first, would be 4 times 1 plus second times second, 1 times negative 4. And I get 4 plus a negative 4, which is 0. And then it doesn't matter what the denominator is, but if I had kept going, I would have done the magnitude of this, square root of 4 squared plus 1 squared, square root of 17, times this, square root of 1 squared plus negative 4 squared, square root of 1 plus 16 or square root of 17. And that would be 0 over the square root of 17 times 17. If it wasn't zero, obviously, I would worry about the bottom, and I would say that the cosine negative one of zero divided by the square root of 17 times 17, I can keep together underneath the square root and let the calculator do the work there. And the cosine at zero, or the inverse cosine at zero, 
should be 90, which should make sense because this looks like it's a right angle. So those two would be ortho orthogonal because that would, those would be perpendicular, right? Dot product of zero, they form a 90 degree angle. If I had compared their slopes, they would have been opposite reciprocals. You can get, is, cosine can be zero. Think about it, right? Cosine x is zero at 90 and 270. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. All right, so the, the directions, like, no, I zoomed out a lot, but they say find a unit vector in the same direction as the one given. So the unit vector is the one where you're going to do the component form of what's given. So the component form of number 47 would be 5, negative 2, over the magnitude of what's given, which would be the square root of 5 squared plus negative 2 squared. So then I would get 25 plus 4, which is 29. And I'd get 5 over the square root of 29 and negative 2 over the square root of 29, which has to get rationalized. So it becomes 5 root 29 over 29 and negative 2 root 29 over 29. So that's a unit vector in the same direction as the one that was given. Should the direction say find a vector with magnitude, let's say, I don't know, 4 in the same direction. as would we start with 5, negative 2. I would have done everything I already done, but then at the end, I would take what I got and multiply it times 4. So I'd get 20 root 29 over 29 and negative 8 root 29 over 29. So there are two different sets of directions, but both same direction one with a changed mag magnitude, one with a unit vector, which means a magnitude of one. So you don't have to change it. And then orthogonal, parallel, and then your complex numbers. Yep. I don't get 78. 78. So remember that there's three ways, right? One thing I could do is find the dot product of these two. I could do 8 times 5 plus negative 4 plus 10, 40 plus a negative 40. And if the dot product is 0, it is. Or I could find their slopes, right? So if I did the slopes, it would be negative 4 over 8 and 10 over 5. And that's negative 1 half, and that's positive 2. If they're opposite reciprocals, it's also perpendicular, right? I would say if you found the angle between already, look at it. If it's 90, you know but you're probably not going to find the angle between. I would choose one of those first. Yeah. So it has to be zero for The dot product has to be zero, or the, the um, slopes have to be opposite reciprocals. For it to be parallel, you just look at the slopes. The slopes would have to be the same. You wouldn't look at the dot product. I said it yesterday, but I can't stress it enough that you need to make sure you're paying attention to the directions. If it says to round an answer, you're going to round it using your calculator. If it does not, you're going to keep it exact. So like these numbers down here are going to be exact. Anything with a square root is going to be kept exact. The things that I want you to round on will say to round. Everybody's good? Yeah? Okay, then came the rest of vectors, uh, orthogonal, and the complex form in 6, 5. So remember, there's more than one way to test for orthogonal, but there's only one way to test for parallel. And then make sure you know how to graph it, and make sure you know how to convert it. Make sure that you know when to keep it exact and when to... Uh, round it. So like something like this, it's not going to tell you. It says without a calculator in these instructions. But it's basically, if it's not telling you to round, you're keeping it exact. So something like that's going to be kept exact. Your, um, if this was a, if that number was a, a square root, it's going to be kept exact. The only ones that you're going to round is law of sines, law of cosines, the areas of those two, and the angle between. Everything else is going to be kept exact.
questions? Okay, 97 says write the complex number in trig form without a calculator. So we're going to find the radius by doing, this would be negative 3 is your A, and 1, negative 1, would be your B. So it's the square root of negative root 3 squared plus negative 1 squared, or the square root of 3 plus 1 squared of 4, which is 2. That's the radius. Then the tangent of theta is B over A. So negative 1 over negative root 3 becomes 1 over root 3, <coughs> which gets rationalized to root 3 over 3. So theta, this is what I would do, tangent, negative 1, right? So if you're smart today, you fill out your unit circle, the over 6s is, is where tangent is root 3 over 3. So I know it's over 6, and it's positive, which means it's either going to be in my first quadrant, pi over 6, or in my fourth, or my third quadrant, sorry, 7 pi over 6. But because these are both negative, I know I'd be going left and down, which means I'm in that third quadrant, so I would pick the 7 pi over 6. So then it's 2 times the cosine of 7 pi over 6 plus i times the sine of 7 pi over 6. And these are another example of ones that you'll keep exact. No, it would if it was that case the the A and B wouldn't necessarily be on unit circle based, that's all. But these questions are going to be unit circle based. Is it ever gonna go away? Sorry? Yep. The points? I would put the points. Yeah, because you, you would need the points for two things. You need the points for if you get an angle and a direction, right? So if I said that the magnitude was 5 and it made an angle of 30 degrees with the x-axis, put it in component form, you would need to know your coordinate point there. So I would say at least do coordinate points in first quadrant. And then maybe go radians sense. all the way around because your radians for this could be any of those quadrants. That's, a, uh, that's at bare minimum what you would need. Yeah. And your tangents, right? And then, I, yeah, and then with the coordinates of those first qu quadrant, I would add on the tangents. Is it ever going to go away or no? The unit circle? No, we legit do it all the way. Like, polar coordinates is, like, one of the last things that we do, and we use it for polar. Good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I try to, like, slam it down your throats enough that you, like, no, I know. yeah, I mean, it's not going to go away. It's not going to go away next year either. Question? Okay, so this is your... Side, side, angle. I know this because if I draw this out, A, B, C. Remember, if I get one of each letter, I'm okay. But if I don't, I have 30 degrees. I have side B, which is 27. And I have side C, which is 32. That's two sides and the non-included angle. So this is a 7. So this is a case uh, that could be one triangle, no triangles, or two triangles. So I'm going to start by first finding the first angle that I can find. I have an entire ratio in B, so I will always use that. I'll always use 27 over the sine of 30. And then the other information I have is side C. So I'm going to say C, which is 32, over the sine of angle. And we're going to call it C1 because we're going to assume that there could be a second triangle. So then I would do 32 times the sine of 30. Good. Divide that by seven, 27, and then I'm going to inverse sign that number. So 32, sine of 27, and then second, or then, no, no, I hit that wrong, sorry. 32, sine of 30, divide it by 27, and I get 0.5925. If that number was 1 or bigger than 1, this is, would be a no triangle scenario, okay? <laughs> So then I'm going to hit inverse sine. I'm going to pull that number back in, and I would get angle C1 is 36.34 degrees. So then I'm going to assume there's a second triangle, and I'm going to start with that angle. C2 would be 180 minus that 36.34. That's how I find that second triangle, which is 145.66. So angle C2, 145.66. So I'm going to finish out triangle one and then I'll go back to triangle two. I have side A, I have angle, sorry, I have side C, 
and angle C, I have side B and angle B. I'm missing that third angle, which would be angle A1. And I would do 180 minus 36.34 minus the original angle that was given, 30. And I get A1 is 113.66. And then the last thing I have to find is side A1. I'm still going to use my original information because I know that that's right. 27 over the sine of 30 would equal side A1 over the sine of 113.66. Cross multiply 27 times the sine of 113.66 divided by the sine of 30. And I get A1 equals 49.46. So, so from my first triangle, I've got side A1, angle A1, and angle C1. Now I'm going to continue with my second triangle. So I got to find A2, angle A2 by doing 180 minus the original angle that they give you, because that's still part of both triangles, minus the 145.66. So 180 minus 30 minus 145.66. And angle A2 is 4.34. If that was negative, then I rule out my second triangle, right? If it's positive like it is, I know there's a second triangle, which means I have one more step and that is to find side A2. I'm still using the initial ratio that they gave me. Good morning. 27 over the sine of 30 would equal A2 over the sine of 4.34. 27 sine of 4.34 divided by the sine of 30, and I get A2 is 4.09. And then from, a, from the second triangle, you've got A2, side A2, angle A2, and side, an angle, sorry, C2. Remember, this only happens in a side-side angle scenario. If you have angle, angle, side, if you're given two angles on one side, there's no possibility of a second triangle. You just complete it, right? You find your third angle using 180 minus the other two, and then set up your ratio. You know how I remember? How? Or a, yeah, if you spell a bad word forwards or I backwards. Bad that. <laughs> I remember this is a bad problem. <laughs> That's how I remember that. It's a pain in the SSA exactly. reversed. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Everybody good on love signs? Yeah. And then we did a side angle side with love cosines. Everybody good on the area for this one? Just don't forget that it's sine, not cosine, right? If it's side angle side, it's sine, so that should have been 0.5 times 7 times 8 times the sine of 52. And this would have been the area here, 22.06. I think it says to round the area to like nearest tenth, but just pay attention to the directions. Then came the law of cosines. So remember, law of cosines, the parentheses are important, and you want to start with the largest angle. So law of cosines, you're either going to give in side angle side, which was like the um, word problem from the homework, or you'll give in side, 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 which is like this example. So for these, I'd start with C. So I would do C squared equals 12 squared plus 17 squared minus 20 squared over 2 times 12 times 17. And then again, I'm going to do cosine. Sorry, this is not C squared. This is cosine of C. And then I'm going to do cosine negative 1 of that whole thing, making sure I put parentheses around the numerator and the denominator. 12 squared plus 17 squared minus 20 squared divided by 2 times 12 times 17. And I get angle C is 85.36. Now, because I switched, because I did the largest one first, I can actually switch the law of sines. But to do that, I'm going to have to use this rounded number. So you are safer with sticking with law of cosines. So then the next one I could find is angle B. So cosine of B would be A squared plus C squared minus B squared over 2AC, which would be 12 squared plus 20 squared minus 17 squared over 2 times 12 times 20. 
And then again, I'm going to do cosine negative 1 of that entire thing. 12 squared plus 20 squared minus 17 squared divided by 2 times 12 times 20. And I'd get angle B is 57.91. And then to get angle A, I can subtract the other two from 180. Or I can do a lot of cosines and make sure I'm right. Just don't waste too much time on something like that if you if you're, know you're going to be short on time. Paolo. If you're doing the 180 minus them, you can do the rounded ones. If you're doing the law of cosines, it's going to be more exact. You don't have to round it because you're going to use the original values, which aren't rounded.